Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we're finally doing the comparison you've been asking for, the Canon EOS R versus the Canon EOS R6. Now, if you're new to the channel, I am a wedding and portrait photographer based out of Austin, Texas, so I will not be covering any video features on this camera. For this video, we're gonna be doing a Lightroom comparison on image quality, and then I'll be giving you my thoughts on why I think the Canon EOS R6 is a worthy upgrade. So let's get started with that comparison. Okay guys, let's get this started. So I have two kind of different examples here. We're gonna start off with the R6 versus the R if everything's properly exposed with the exact same settings to see if there's any difference. And then we're gonna look at some high ISO and some underexposed shots to again, see if there's big differences. But here on the left, we have the R6. Here on the right, we have the EOS R, both at the exact same settings. You can see one two fiftieth of a second on both, 1.2 ISO 100. The only thing I've tweaked on these files is lens corrections and the white balance. I try to get the white balance to match as close as possible. These cameras just read white balance very differently. So uh, if I were to say there's a huge difference between the cameras is the way they see white balance. Uh, other than that, when they're properly exposed, you're gonna see that they look very, very similar. The one thing that stood out the most though is the EOS R constantly exposes brighter. Now, let me know in the comments below if this is just the camera reading more light, if it's better dynamic range on the R6, or again, if it's something arbitrary, but when zooming into these files, you're gonna notice that obviously the R has 10 more megapixels, so one-to-one, -one, you do get closer, you do get more resolution, but as far as sharpness and detail, both shots look absolutely stunning tons of detail on the R6 and the R. So if you wanna go ham in Photoshop and do all kinds of tweaks, I think both files here will definitely do the job. And now let's, let's take a look at them with my preset applied and again, trying to get them to match as close as possible. So here on the left is the R6, here on the right is the R. Again, my preset slapped on. All I did was throw in my preset and try to get the white balance to match. I did have to obviously reduce the exposure and highlights on the R's file because it's just a brighter file but you can see that they're pretty close. If I really put more effort into it, I can get them to match. So from this example here, and you're gonna see from other examples, if you wanted to shoot with the R6 and the R for a wedding type environment, I think you can get the cameras to match perfectly fine without any issues. And both cameras here look pretty solid. Looking at another shot, same settings, same result. The R exposes brighter, but overall, both files look solid here, again, Zooming in, you do get more resolution on the R, but that doesn't mean you get more sharpness or detail. This is kind of showing that if you expose properly, guys, like the R and the R6 and any camera in the last five years have exposed properly, you're gonna get very, very similar results. Now let's take a look at this picture with my preset applied. Okay, so here we have on the left the R6, on the right we have the R. Both files, again, look very, very close to each other. Uh, white balance would probably be tweaked just a bit more to get them to match even closer. Both files look solid. Now for the last picture here in this set, R6 on the left, R on the right, it's the exact same story. This one I did not do a good job getting the white balance to match. Now the white balance is kind of drastically different. Um, I think the R here or the R6 does produce warmer tones and I think people have called that out in other videos. Uh, obviously here shooting raw pictures, you can tweak the white balance afterwards. In video, I can see the R6 does tend to lean on the warmer tones, but with photos, that's totally fixable and tweakable in post, so no big deal. Again, both pictures here look totally fine to me. Looking at both pictures with my preset on, you can see that the sky in the background looks almost identical. Here's one thing I noticed, and this is, uh, I don't have an example of it here. I should have actually tried. If you look at the cloud here in the top, the R6 tends to blow out highlights easier than the EOS R. So this is something, again, this is, um, we're looking at a freaking cloud in the background. I wish I had done a better example here, but you can see how there's more detail here in the cloud on the R than there is on the R6. If I were to pull the highlights down on both files, the R does a better job not blowing out highlights. The R6 for some weird reason is just extremely sensitive to highlights. So if you blow out highlights, and the R6 is gonna be pretty much impossible to recover. It's the opposite with the R, so the R6 just does better if you underexpose it. 
um, because of that reason. But other than that, both files look almost identical. Small little differences here in the white balance, but you can get them to match very easily if you want to shoot with the R6 and the R in a wedding type environment. All right, guys, so now let's jump to the other set of photos where we'll look at high ISO and dynamic range. Okay, so here on the left, we have the R6, and on the right, we have the R. Both files are underexposed by two stops. And you're gonna be able to see here on the R, again, it exposes a brighter image. Just like we did in the previous photos, these files are completely untouched, straight out of camera. I actually left the white balance here as shot, and you can see there's some minor differences there. But let's go ahead and up the exposure by two stops on both files and see what they look like. So we have the R6 here on the left and the R on the right again, and you can start seeing automatically that upping the exposure two stops, the R6 retains all color detail. The image still looks vivid, even though it's a raw file. On the R, you can start seeing the loss of color. So uh, my wife just looks extremely desaturated, and that's just because, again, the camera just doesn't do as well when it's underexposed. When you zoom in, now here it's gonna look like a minor difference, right? You can see the background here and my wife, like there's no noise uh, whatsoever on the R6. On the R, you start noticing a noise pattern in the background, in the shadows, in my wife's hair, and it's not as noticeable right now, but the minute you start tweaking this file, the minute you throw a preset on, the R is gonna fall apart. And as a matter of fact, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I just literally clicked on my preset and did nothing else. And you can see that the color fidelity, the colors just look better on the R6 and the R is still looking very desaturated. And again, if you were to zoom in, the noise pattern here on the R in the background is a lot more noticeable. The R6 actually still looks extremely clean even though it's pushed to full stops. If you are like me and don't like using flash, uh, I rather, underexpose a photo to retain like the sky or highlight detail. The R6 is a huge upgrade as far as dynamic range goes. You can definitely push it up to three stops comfortably versus the R. I think this is the most I'd push it here and before you start kind of having really start pushing the colors and the boundaries of what it can do. But let's look at some high ISO examples. Okay, so here we have the same photo, same settings again, but this time we're at ISO 16 100. And just like all the other samples, you can see that the R does expose brighter. And zooming in here, you're gonna be able to see that the R is already showing uh, some noise here in the background, and the R6 is actually still looking pretty clean. The R6 is a cleaner file, but at 1600, I, I feel very comfortable using both files here. Now here we're at 3200, and here's where you're gonna start noticing some differences. So I think the R6 is about a stop better than the R. And if you zoom in here, on the left is the R6, on the right is the R. You can start seeing that digital noise a lot on the R versus the R6 is looking like the R at 1600. So uh, very clean in the background, very clean in the shadows and the R is just showing a lot more noise. Now 6400 is where the R is gonna kind of fall apart and the R6 will pretty much look like the R at 3200. So here we are at 6400 and R6 on the left, R on the right and you can see that the noise is starting to increase on the R. So looking at these files, the R6 is definitely cleaner. Now, I've taken shots at ISO 6400 with the R and just done some noise reduction and been able to use them just fine. Obviously, if you're able to have more detail without noise reduction, it's better, and here you can see in the corners, the R6 is a cleaner file. So I think the R6 is about a full stop cleaner than the R. So pretty much if you look at the R6 of 6400, and if I were to pull up an ISO 3200 shot with the R, I bet you they look pretty close. So here we have 3200 on the R on the right, 64 on the R6 on the left. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And yep, I was pretty spot on. Let's look at this. As a matter of fact, the R6 could be a pinch cleaner Let's compare it to the R at 1600, hell, why, why not? Okay, so here we have the R6 at 6400, the R at 1600. The R is retaining colors better, so uh, I, I pushed it a little too far. Uh, so yeah, I still feel comfortable saying the R6 is about a full stop cleaner than the R. Not two stops, I went a little crazy there. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Okay guys, so there you have it. I said it earlier and I'm a firm believer any camera in the past five years of exposed properly will give you stunning results. 
I think as cameras progress and get better, you're gonna start seeing differences in high ISO and dynamic range. Now, if you're just a portrait photographer and you're shooting in a studio where you control everything, I personally don't think going from the EOS R to the R6 is a worthy upgrade. But I don't even think that camera is for that photographer. That's why you have the R5. The R6 is aimed more at, I think, wedding photographers. And from that perspective, I think it's a incredible upgrade. Here's why. During weddings, you don't always have full control of the environment. Yes, you can bring strobes and lights, but personally, that's not my style. I'm a natural light photographer. So having a camera that can be extremely flexible with dynamic range and high ISO alone is reason for me to upgrade. Again, I don't like bringing flashes. Sometimes I wanna retain the detail in the sky and I wanna just kind of have that perfect balance and that requires me to underexpose. With the R, I was able to do that to about maybe a stop comfortably, but going two stops, I knew I was losing out on certain details. I was gonna get increased noise. And overall, it wasn't the image quality I wanted to deliver to my clients. With the R6, I can now fully underexpose three stops. Again, people are gonna say that's stupid. Why would you do that? And I just told you why. I don't wanna be lugging around a million flashes and a million lights when I can just underexpose it really quick, get the shot I want, and move on. With weddings, you don't have all the time in the world to set up the perfect shot. Hi ISO. I love a perfect sparkler exit. But with sparkler send-offs or night shots, which I like doing with every wedding, I always do push the upper limits of ISO. And knowing I can push that high ISO to 6400 and have that flexibility throughout the night is worth it to me. That's just from an image quality perspective. We're not talking about better body ergonomics, dual SD card slots, IBIS. To recap, if you find yourself exposing properly 24 seven or you're a flash photographer, you're not gonna see a huge difference. And you should only upgrade if you really need those dual SD card slots or IBIS. Now, if you are a run and gun photographer, a wedding photographer, and you don't always have full control of the environment, having that better dynamic range, having that better high ISO, and having that flexibility to choose how you wanna shoot is a worthy upgrade to me. Yes, you are losing 10 megapixels, but to me, Dynamic range and ISO is more important. So overall, that was just a small comparison. I wish I was doing more weddings right now, but obviously COVID-19 has kind of uh, put a stop to that. So hopefully this comparison is enough. I will be comparing the R6 and the R5 to see how those do. So stay tuned for that. As always guys, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one guys. Peace.